So friend and fellow YouTuber Donnie Carter sent me this amazing applewood turn pin on the lathe, so I figured I'd make a leather pin case to put it in. For the cases I'm using some 3 ounce Chrome Excel horse front leather. Uh, I've got some brown and some black, so I'm going to be making uh, 3 or 4 cases out of each color just to have on hand. Next up I mark a reference line a half inch down from the top on both edges of the leather. Uh, this is before gluing up the leather uh, and the reference lines help me determine where I need to start putting the glue and I use a water based glue for this. I find it doesn't stink and it does a pretty good job. The reason I don't put glue all the way to the top of this is so the fingers will have access to reach the pin and pull it out. With the glue tacky I know it's dried enough and I'm ready to start putting this together and when you're folding the leather together like this uh, before stitching it's really important to make sure that the edges line up as good as you can get it. That way there's less stuff you have to do after it's glued up to get the edges true. And this is a half inch section that I didn't put any glue on. To add a little flair to make these look a little bit better, I'm using a half inch round chisel that I picked up uh, a set of these on Amazon. And I'm going to put a round corner on two edges of the leather pin cases, the, the top edge and the bottom edge. I've tried free handing rounded corners like this, but for a few dollars I found it better to just grab a cheap set and use the punch instead of free handing it. I just found that it does a better job and it's and it's pretty much a stress free uh, stress free cut. With my divider set to an eighth of an inch I go ahead and mark the line for the stitching and as you can see here I'm starting about a half of an inch down because I don't want to stitch the area that's not glued and I reference the side of the leather case all the way around to the bottom. Like a majority of my projects, I just use the four prong and two prong diamond chisels and I find that you can do a lot of projects with just these two so it's worth spending a few extra dollars to get better made diamond chisels uh, and just get the ones you need. Um, and I like to mark out where the, uh, the prongs are going to be going just to make sure that I don't run into any surprises. Uh, and when I get down to the tight corners I switch over to the two prong. When I got to the very end, the spacing wasn't exact, so I just split the difference with the two prong chisel and made a mark. And now that I have all the marks laid out and I know the path that I'm going, I go ahead and hit the diamond chisels all the way through the leather with a mallet to strike the holes for the stitches. One thing that you'll notice that I'm doing after I punch the hole in the leather, I use this plastic bone folder to hold the leather down when I pull the chisels out because it's only held together temporarily with glue and I don't want that to come apart. And again when I get down to the corner I switch over to the two prong chisel and I finish it up. And just a tip, when you are using the diamond chisel it's really important to stay on your line that you marked with your dividers uh, to keep things nice and straight. For the brown leather case I went with a Colonial 10 08 millimeter thread. And to determine how much thread you're going to need you'll want to trace your stitch holes with the thread and then you want to take that amount and times it roughly by four. Um, I like to times it by four and a half if it's a small project like this just to make sure that I'm not going to run out. So next up I lace up the needles and begin saddle stitching. Uh, I'm not going to really cover the how I saddle stitch because it's kind of tough to get on camera. Uh, but I will link to a book in the description below on a, a really great illustrated book on how to saddle stitch. And it's only a few dollars and I recommend picking it up if you're interested in learning how to saddle stitch. One little tip when you are saddle stitching these smaller projects like this is when you come to tighten down your thread before moving on to the next line or the next hole you want to make sure that you don't pull too tight like right here in the video because that will make your uh, stitch line pretty wavy. And finally we're going to move on to some edge finishing. I like to start sanding the edges with 120 grit sandpaper and I want to keep sanding until I get a consistent look and make sure that it's a nice smooth uh, edge without any glue on it. I progress from 120 to 220 and then to 400 grit sandpaper and this leaves the edges nice and smooth and ready for some burnishing. There's several different methods for edge burnishing but I like to use the gum dragacanth uh, and I apply it with a q-tip and then after I apply it I want to make sure that I get all of the uh, gum tragacanth off of the dyed side of the leather just to make sure that it doesn't cause any issues and then I just use this wooden burnisher to burnish the edges. And it takes several coats of this gum tragacanth and burnishing to get a nice sheen on the leather. Um, so after I apply one coat, I will let the gum tragacanth dry and then I'll come back and sand it with a 400 grit sandpaper and then apply the gum tragacanth three or four times to get the, uh, the sheen that I like.
and this is the outcome. I'm extremely happy with it. Um, if you have some spare leather, I would recommend giving this a try. These are nice skill builder projects to uh, introduce you into leather working. Uh, and these are items that you can use every day. And after months and months of using these leather pin cases, they will patina a little bit and just start to look a whole lot better. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, I will be linking to a Simple Cove article on my website with uh, dimensions and more information about this. So be looking uh, for that below in the description box. Um, and let me know what you guys think. Do you like the leatherworking projects? Just leave a comment below and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button and share it with a friend. And if you're not already, please subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.